What's up everybody? I'm Abe, this is Stellaris, and uh, it is version 1.9.1, just to give you a baseline by which to work from. Um, and we're going to be getting into traits for entire, uh, Empire creation, and specifically it'll be the, the racial traits down here. So if we just click over to the United Nations of Earth, just to use this as the template that, uh, that we're working with, there are a lot of different options to choose. And so just to use this as a, I, I guess, a standard right now, they've got um, these three chosen, but we're going to deselect all three of those so that you understand. Now, this window tells us that we have, we get to pick five different things, but we only have two points to use by which to take those five picks, basically. And as you can see, this is the cost of this ability. So if I want to be agrarian, I've used my two points and only one of my picks, and unless I go down here and find something that's red, which is a negative trait, I'll that'll give me more points. But unless I do that, I'm done. Like if I just want to be agrarian and that's it and we're done, then I can move on to the next part. So if you there are one point items like rapid breeding, there's you can be talented, and that uses two, obviously. And so if you really there's no reason to use all five picks. You don't have to. You can use one. You don't have to pick any, really. But they're giving you two free points, and you might as well use them. So let's look at what some of your options are. So there are items uh, that, uh, that you might want to impact. So agrarian, to look at that, increases your food output by 15%, and that directly impacts how quickly your, uh, your populations grow, um, whether they grow and yeah just that's that's pretty much it for food uh thrifty energy credits uh plus 15 percent and energy credits are used to any building you make on your planets any uh outposts or stations you build in space all will require certain like a certain amount of energy and so this you will be generating energy on a lot of these buildings because you're going to be creating power plants and other such things and this would just allow you to create 15 percent more from every source right so it'll take whatever the let's say your 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 society is creating or generating 15 or let's say 100 uh, energy credits you will make 115 instead um, some of these are really pretty straightforward. Same thing with minerals. Minerals are basically the currency that you would use to build things. So if you want to build a, uh, a power plant, for example, or a mining station, you're going to need the amount of minerals required to, to do that. And so this just adds 15% on top of that. Intelligent gives you 10% to all of your science and research output. And those are engineering, physics, and society are the three types of science or research. And uh, those are generated and harvested, let's say, in the same way that you would harvest food, minerals, or power. Uh, natural engineers, these are specific bonuses to the, each of the research uh, options. So you can have 15% bonus to engineering or physics or sociology or society, uh, as opposed to the 10 across the board. So if you really want to be focused on science, you can pick one or multiples of these to sort of compound it. Um, extremely adaptive, and you can see that this costs you four points, so you're going to have to go negative in order to, to pick this up and to be able to afford it, but it affects the habitability. Now, habitability, so we look at uh, right now these humans, they really like continental worlds. So they are anywhere from 80 to 100% habitable to these humans right well if you go to a frozen planet or a um <clears throat> a dry planet or an arid planet for example the habit how habitable they are habitable boy that's hard to say repeatedly how habitable they are to your specific race is dependent upon the choice of planet that you choose so to increase the habitability would give you this or this is what this bonus would provide so instead of 80 to 100 percent or let's say you come across a planet that's only 40 percent habitable it would instead be 60 percent and that's really uh, a very impactful and drastic modification or change that you can have because it opens up a lot more worlds very early on to um to to your uh settlement effectively and your 
transition to that planet and opening up populations there. So um, extremely adaptive, adaptive. This is like 20% more, 10% more. And, uh, and there, are, there are science or research options that allow you to increase your habitability overall to all planet types. But that won't come and that won't be something that you get into until uh, sort of the mid game, at very least, if not the late game. So this gives you a leg up in the early game. Non-adaptive, obviously, is the, uh, the negative version of that. And that's just a negative 10%. And so that slows down and reduces the amount of planets that you would have access to until later in the game. Now, this may be a trade-off that you're willing to make because you... Uh, you realize that you're focused on science, so you're going to get a lot of research done, and you're going to research out habitability, and you're going to sort of counteract this early trait. Uh, rapid breeders. This uh, allows you to grow your population 20% faster. So you start out on, you know, you have your own planet, your home planet, and even just filling that planet out, or the first planet that you decide to uh, resettle in or to uh, colonize, Filling those out takes a good long while. Uh, we're talking years, if not decades. And this increases that and also then increases the amount of resources that those populations are producing and science that they're you know, researching and all of that. So um, this is worth considering. And it also comes up as um, there are buildings that you can build that help your growth speed. And those are things that you need to research as well. Slow breeders is the opposite of that. Your populations grow more slowly. Um, talented, your, your leaders, and we're talking the governors of your planet or your solar system, the, uh, the scientists that you hire and that, that conduct not only your research, but also the surveying and exploration of nearby stars. Um, they all have levels. And the higher level they are, the faster and better that they work. So if they're doing research, they're researching faster. If they're surveying and uh, looking into anomalies, they have much lower risk of exploring those anomalies. So um, this increases the level cap for that. Members of this species are born with a natural aptitude. So you start out at a higher level. Quick learners. Uh, you gain experience faster, and of course, then there's the alternative to that, which is slow learners, and that's just 25% change, plus or minus. Um, if you, some of these pair well with each other, so you could be a fast learner, but you could have a, um, a short-lived leader, so they might live a shorter period of time, but they might learn faster, so they sort of counteract each other. These are things that you can do to pair up um, and to pick up traits that you're you're more interested in. So quick learners, slow learners. There's very strong and strong, and these impact the damage that your armies do. And armies are specific to either defending your planets or attacking planets and occupying them. And it also gives you a bonus to the minerals that you produce. And as you can see, there's a 10% boost for being very strong. 40% boost to your army damage compared to being strong, which is 20 and 5. And then as the negative side of that, you could also be weak. And that gives you a negative 20% damage for your army and minus 5% to your minerals. Um, nomadic. This changes how quickly you... Oh, my watch thought it should weigh in. This changes how quickly you migrate and uh, how much it costs. So... It's not a cheap thing to colonize a planet, and it's a very slow process that saps a lot of your uh, your energy credits in doing so. And so speeding that up um, definitely has a boost, and there's the, the negative form of that as well. Um, there are also research items that, that address this and that can speed that up. But again, early in the game, this might be something that uh, that is something you want to choose. And also... A lot of these you can sort of tell a story about your race, right? I mean, like, this is all very statistical and, oh, this makes it so I research physics, you know, 15% faster. But but maybe you are, you know, you're, you've got this image of, of who your people are and what their interests are. And they're really, they're really all like Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? So you want to focus on physicists and physics and that's the the research that you want to focus on so have fun with it like there's a lot of ways to really customize your race and customize who you are and i like to try to let that inform some of the decisions i will make later in the game because you're always posed with 
um, choices as you interact with other aliens, as you research the history of your your people, um, all kinds of things. And if you have some sort of backstory that you're building on for your race that uh, is informing those decisions, it'll make it a much richer and more interesting experience to play the game. So I suggest you do that. Uh, so, all right, so we've got nomadic and sedentary. Uh, communal, generally all of your populations have a happiness level, and this depends on a variety of things, but this gives you a quick boost right off the top of 5%. Uh, happiness dictates how productive they are in their jobs, whether they're producing power, doing research, or generating minerals, or whatever, food. Um, it'll have a drastic impact on how much they're able to generate if they're happy versus very unhappy, and then if they're unhappy long enough or unhappy enough, um, they can also provide unrest and eventually revolt and break away from your, your, uh, your government. And you don't want that. So happiness, solitary, um, solitary and territorial, often becoming agitated in crowded conditions. So whether that's crowded conditions where other races are near you in space or whether it's uh, just that they don't like being next to each other on the planet. I think it's their relationship to, excuse me, their relationship to being nearby uh, other aliens in space, um, where your borders are, where their borders are, and that sort of thing. Uh, charismatic. Now, <clears throat> this impacts uh, how members of the species have a special charisma and are generally considered pleasant to be around. So when you interact with and... Ex um, are introduced to your nearby aliens, your neighbors, so to speak. This will impact how they view you. So if you're charismatic, they will have a higher starting opinion of you, and this will, their opinion of you will always be bolstered by you being charismatic. Um, and it impacts their happiness as well. So if you're next to somebody that's repugnant as opposed to charismatic, then it will natively impact you uh, or natively impact them if... Um, if you are repugnant or if they are repugnant, you will be negatively impacted. So um, these things sort of impact how you interact with other people. Um, you can be conformists, which means that you pick all these things and you move into space and you start developing and expanding. But the further people get away from your home planet, the more they sort of are able to diverge from your governing ethics, right? They may be physicists to start, but maybe there'll be some spiritualists that crop up on the outskirts of your territory. And being a conformist gives a much higher chance that they stay physicists and Neil deGrasse Tyson's than changing into, say, uh, a religious society on the outskirts. And you can have, obviously, deviants, which gives a higher probability of that happening and deviating from, from, from the norm here. You've got Venerable, which gives a much higher or much longer lifespan to your leaders. Um, and your leaders are recruited by using influence, which is generated very slowly. So um, if they live 80 years longer than they normally would, that will save you a lot of influence and allow you to spend it on other things like making your people happy or keeping them tied into sort of the ethics of your, uh, your society. So... Venerable and Enduring is a much smaller version of that, which instead of 80 years uh, longer life, it's only 20 years. Fleeting is the opposite side of that, and that's 10-year shorter lifespan. Uh, and we're coming to the end here, and this there, we've got Decadent, which is happiness, how happy they are without owning slaves or robotic servants. So they are 10% less happy if they don't own other populations. Uh, resilient makes your garrison or your essentially your defensive armies uh, hundred percent more like have twice as much health and it gives you a fortification defensive bonus so that's of limited use I don't personally I've never chosen that but uh, if you would like to be able to defend yourself more effectively that's something to consider and you've got conservationists which uh, reduce the amount of consumer goods costs that you have to incur as your populations grow and as you expand to other planets, um, your populations use and consume consumer goods and it costs you energy credits. And so the cost of that will be 15% less if you pick this trait. 
And then lastly, being wasteful is the opposite side of that. It costs you 15% more. So, so those are the traits. And you can add them up however you like. So you can be non-adaptive, um, slow breeders, but you are also, let's see, uh, you're venerable, you live forever, and you also, I don't know, you are quick learners. Right, so you're gonna be, you're gonna have a lot of max level um, leaders in your society for long periods of time, but your populations will grow slowly, and you you won't be able to be as adaptive to other planets. So, so like I said, there's a lot of options here, and there are a lot of ways to combine and um, alter them in such a way as to make a backstory for yourself and to sort of create an image initially of who your people are. So. So that's the traits. We're going to cut it here. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments by all means, and we can get into it a little bit deeper. There are all kinds of different things to talk about, and this is just one of them. And if you have a question that's specific to any of these traits or how these traits interact with the mechanic in the game, uh, please hit me up in the comments. I, I would really love to answer your questions and or make a video for, for you and to, to answer your specific question, because I guarantee you you're not the only person who's had that question. So... Thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.